Let's go to the first store. <laughs> this was the first location of Webb's. We taught weaving down here for eight students. The space was small and dark, and the lights were terrible. The wall was somewhat over about, about here. So we had a wall about here. And so it was much smaller and much darker because it had a very dark paneling on it. Yeah, this has been a long time since we started right on this floor. My friend Donna Mueller Singer and I met each other because Steve and her son were in Montessori school together. And as we went on, we realized that as poor young faculty wives at home with kids, we needed a way to earn money to support our yarn needs. We hit on the idea of renting looms the way kids rent musical instruments in school with the option to buy. What was really unique about the way that my mom started the business was that she was going to teach weaving in a different way than it had ever been taught before. What we did was allow the students to take their looms home, do their homework, come back, so they were constantly kind of attached to the looms. We borrowed money from the Elkin Savings Account, placed an order for 20 Harrisville kit looms, which we picked up loose in the back of our gigantic Chevy station wagon. So our idea was to teach weaving, and Donna submitted a proposal for a January term course at Hampshire College, and it was accepted, and we hauled our looms down to Hampshire, rented them to the students, and started teaching. It worked. I was home with the kids, by the time Steve got old enough to leave him or let him come home after school, it just made sense to move out. So this is it right here. This is 109 Main Street, which is now 401 to 409 Main Street. And Robert Frost lived upstairs there. You can come around front when we get out of the car. And these were, we had windows just like this, yes. only smaller. Yeah. Oh, I guess, I guess our entrance was on the back side. If you, we ever violated the old term, location, 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 we did it. It was, uh, it was a, a, a cellar location entered through the back of a driveway with only two or three parking spaces. And it was a uh, nice, nice backyard. And, uh, but it wasn't the place where people walking on the street would look in the window and say, oh, I want to go in there, because they didn't know it was even there. We were able to, 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 to make that, that space habitable for about what, two or three years, four years. Uh, we started finding different sources of yarn. And, uh, uh, and then all of a sudden the knitters started showing up uh, looking for yarn to knit with. So we sold them some weaving yarn to knit with, but then we decided that we needed to get some knitting yarn into that store. We had this small mailing list. Everybody who came in, we got their name and address. And then all of a sudden we got this idea, well, maybe we're going to go in mail order. And we had some mill and yarns that we picked up from various suppliers. And we sent out our first batch of yarn samples to about 80 people. I'm not even sure we had enough yarn to fill all those orders, but we did. And, uh, and it worked. It started working. So we started buying more. Webs really started to grow when my father started buying mill ends throughout the U.S. It was at a time when the U.S. textile industry was much bigger. More goods from the mills of America. Mills who and are there were overstock lots or small lots left over. We started primarily doing weaving yarns, eventually brought in some knitting closeouts. If you saw those movies about the southern cotton mills that, that, that were old and and dusty and so forth. These were the mills we were going into. And uh, most of the time we walked in, they were making really, really fine count yarns, very thin yarns. And so we would say, okay, 
you don't have anything we want, and uh, do you know anybody who does? And they would send us off up the road to another mill, and we, we picked up sources, and we picked up some, some mill ends direct from the mills, and we picked up some sources where we could buy yarn. 109 Main Street was getting a little tight, and we had this opportunity uh, to buy this building. It, uh, this building came up. It was, you really get a commercial building in Amherst. And uh, this building came on the market. It was commercially zoned, and we thought we could make it, make it with that building. This is Matt Stamel, who now owns the building. How, how you doing? Good, Good to, to see, see you. you. Hi, Matt. Good, to, Good see to see you. Buying Kellogg Avenue was really scary for us. And I remember we sat on the back porch and debated, should we buy it? Barbara and I looked at each other and said, if Webbs is going to be something, we're going to make it into something, and we're going to put, put uh, our full time into it and, and really work at it. And, uh, and we did. We tore all the walls down that, that uh, uh, literally divided this into rooms. So we tore all the walls down, we tore all those walls down, and we had to put beams up. And the second floor was basically all the weaving yarn, and all the looms were up in the second floor. It was a cozy little building. We thought, well, good, that's going to last us about 10 years. And 10 years is fine, and we can worry about what happens after 10 years. Inside of four, we were pushing the walls out of that building. We didn't realize how busy we were going again. The mail order literally exploded on us. The UPS truck would back right up to it, to the porch, and we'd toss, over, toss the packages over the railing. I was at the register one day, and I had to go to the bathroom. And instead of being able to go back through the store, I couldn't. There were too many people in there. I had to go out the front door, go around the back door, and come in the back door to go to the bathroom. And I said, that's it. We're, this is too small for us. I can't move in this store. And so that was, that was how, we, uh, how we decided we, we really have to go looking. And this time we weren't going to make the same mistake over again. We said, if we're going to move and we're going to move again, we're going to move into a sp space that we can live in for a long time. We needed about 15,000 square feet, and there was nothing in Amherst that was suitable. But I said, you know, let's look at Northampton. Serendipity again. We didn't know how good that location was going to be. We knew it was going to give us the space we needed. We had plenty of office space. We had plenty of packing space. But we didn't realize how good a retail space it was going to be. Webs was growing, and you know I read that we ought to have a website, we ought to have a URL, whatever that was. I didn't even know what it was at that time, and uh, started looking for webs.com, and it was taken. And so I said, "Well, let's put yarn in, and see what happens." And lo and behold, yarn.com wasn't taken. So we grabbed it. The original website was was small, it was informational. We did have yarns on there. You could call our 800 number and order, and someone would sit on the phone and take the order. But it wasn't an ordering website at all. And uh, that didn't happen until one of the agencies we work with started developing the website. And then, of course, when Steve and Kathy came in, they developed it even further. There were a lot of different things going on at the time, and we had seen an ability to grow the knitting yard business. The Internet started growing rapidly, and knitting started growing rapidly right at the same time you know, we caught a great wave. Steve's parents, in their process of sourcing yarns, found some permanent yarns that they were able to get over and over, not just mill ends, and they called those the Webb's Permanent Collection. One of the things Steve and I decided to do was to give them a brand name, and we spent a lot of time coming up with Valley Yarns, and we decided it needed to be expanded upon, that there was a real opportunity for us to add to that line and have our own brand of yarns to offer to our customers, and that was really how it's, it started. Yeah, I mean, if you look back at when we made the decision to come on board in 2001 to where we are today, there's really not much that we haven't changed. Now it's really about the growth. The growth in our e-commerce business has been tremendous. But at the core of the business, you know, what my mom started out doing, which is all about serving the customer, is still really what we do today. We serve 
the customer in so many ways from classes to the events to um, just coming in and having a place that's you know their their haven is how we look at it. I think Steve and Kathy have webs perfectly positioned for whatever is going to happen, whatever changes. It's been a lot of fun, and and we still have a lot of fun, and we still have a lot of fun watching Steve and Kathy. My philosophy is: if you don't have fun, you don't do it.